back. Daniel chapter 6, part 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first half was phenomenal for me personally. Mm -hmm. And I love the practical parts of this story. Mm -hmm. um, it, just, it just makes sense, but it really brings it home to our own needs today, the things that we need in our own hearts and our own experience. So I, I could just stay in that for the rest of the program, but we've got to move on. We've got to get the rest of this yeah. covered. And of course, we want to continue on in Revel uh, Daniel chapter 7. Oh, Daniel mm -hmm. chapter 7 is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So let's just jump right in. We'll start with a word of prayer. Vaughn, would you like to pray for us? Sure. Father God, thank you so very much for this privilege of opening and studying your word and just getting these truths that you're sending through your Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you and ask you to continue to lead and guide and be with us, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Jason, let's read here some of the verses. Revelation, oh, excuse me, Daniel chapter 6. <laughs> Woo, <laughs> too much talking about Revelation <laughs> for this program, huh? <laughs> All right, Daniel chapter 6, and let's go from verse 12. And we'll go all the way through to verse 15. Okay. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, this thing, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king that, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, hmm. O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till, he, till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Wow. Mm. This is an amazing little section right here. Mm. And there's a few things that really stand out to me, and I just thought we could touch on them a little bit. Mm. One of the things that really stands out to me here is when it says here that in verse 14, and when the king heard these words, mm. he was sore displeased with himself. himself. Mm -hmm. Like, the one of the things that I think is really important about leadership is that you take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we don't see in politics today is that willingness to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the king realized I was duped. Mm -hmm. right. He doesn't cast blame. He could, he could blame those guys, but he says, man, I messed up here, didn't mm -hmm. I? Wow, they got me. Mm -hmm. These guys just set me up. And basically, this is the thing he feared, I think, from the beginning. And basically what they've did is done is they've turned this upside down. They're now the president. They're now the king. Mm. And he's the one that has to obey. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he didn't want that. That's the reason why he liked Daniel so much, because he saw something in Daniel that wasn't trying to get power, trying to take over. These guys are trying to take over. Mm. And they've taken him over. Right. They backed him into a corner, even though he's the king, and they've used flattery and they've used deception to get him to do things their way mm -hmm. that he would never have done if he would have known. Right. And he's displeased with himself because he's probably, he's a, he's a ruler, he's a king, he's probably politically astute, he probably, you know, he knows how to navigate that stuff, and he's just been duped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he's just, and so then he starts laboring, he says, I gotta do everything I can, because here's the deal that I love about this. Number one, he takes responsibility. Number two, his main concern is not for himself, it's for Daniel. Right. I messed up and it's gonna cost him. Right. I need to do everything I can to get Daniel out of this. And this is what I love about this king. The principles that he's revealing are Christ-like. Mm. Taking responsibility, Christ took responsibility for our sin, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking of others. He's thinking of Daniel, he's not thinking of himself. Mm -hmm. I got to do everything I can to help Daniel get out of this. Mm -hmm. And the point that I love about this, and we'll see this a little bit more later as he talks to Daniel about his God, is that there are good people in the world that aren't Christians. Mm -hmm. There are good people in other churches that aren't Adventists. You know, sometimes we think we're the only good people. Well, actually, we're <laughs> far outnumbered, I think. Mm -hmm. The majority of good people are out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily in this denomination. And we need to remember that. Yeah. This is what the story is telling us. Yeah, you've got Daniel. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we can call him an Adventist if you want to. <laughs> He's a good guy, right? Uh -huh. Right. But then you've got Darius. And this guy's got some good principles too. Right. I mean, this guy really likes Daniel. And you know when someone likes someone who's devoted to God, there's got to be something that God's mm -hmm. working in them too. Mm -hmm. And we need to give credit where credit is due. 
So these are two principles that I really love about yeah. this. And I think yeah. you even look at um, uh, the persecutions during the Dark Ages. You know, there were many people who were responsible for the death of different martyrs mm -hmm. who once they came to a realization like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. what am I doing? You know, some of those very people through the death of martyrs were yes. actually converted as mm -hmm. a result of their willingness to go to the lion's den. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna find that in the end of time too. You know, there's gonna be, the Bible says, the time's coming where they that kill you, within they they're doing God a service. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna be people who are really against, you know, the dragon went to make war mm -hmm. with the remnant of his seed, which keep the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. He's gonna lead people mm -hmm. to persecute those who keep the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. And many of those people are gonna to come to a realization, wait a minute, mm -hmm. something's not right about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna be, um, you know, uh, 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 an awakening, if you will, in mm -hmm. many of these people, and they'll come to see truth, mm -hmm. um, you know, as it is in Jesus. So mm -hmm. I think Darius is a good picture of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, good point. So he, he works till the going down of the sun to deliver Daniel because he's been deceived by these guys. In fact, another thing they say here that's really interesting, another lie, verse 13, um, they answered and they said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, which I think is really interesting that they refer back to his, mm. you know, of the children of the captivity. You remember the captivity? He's mm. like, these are the lower end here. Yeah. And that happens a number of times through this story. Yeah. And I think it's really important for us because um, in politics, whether it's in the world or in the church, people refer back to our past mm. and they say, hey, you know, look where they came from. They did that with Jesus all the time. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. We're not yeah. born in fornication, you know, yeah. we, we know who our dad is, right? right? And so they're using everything they can. And then they go on to say this. They say, he, O king, regards thee not. Mm. In other words, he, he, did, he doesn't have respect. He doesn't have respect for he you. He doesn't have right. respect for you. Mm -hmm. Is that true or false? False. That's false. completely false. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. But they've they've so set things up yeah. with right. this law that it looks like it's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he's not following your law. And 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 at this point, Darius is like, you're not fooling me anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Like he yeah. sees it. And we gotta realize that it's important for us to hold true to God's principles because even if there's a consequence where we can be misrepresented, there'll be honest people who will see through all of that. Yeah. They'll see through it all. Yeah. You look at our political system today and there are people, they're just going, oh, come on, <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is just so obvious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we talked in the last program about Satan in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And this being a picture of Satan's, Lucifer's jealousy of Christ in heaven. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the angels, one third of the angels that ended up rebelling against Christ. And you can imagine the kind of pictures they painted about mm -hmm. the, you know, Jesus in mm -hmm. heaven. And uh, you know, James and I were talking last night just about how Satan has the ability to put to, you know, I'll say this way, Satan is a master of mm -hmm. perception. Yes. He's a master of perception. When we hear that term, we usually think, no, he's a master of deception. No, but he's also a master of perception. Perception, mm. yeah. And he will cause us to perceive things. And so, you know, you think about the children of Israel in the mm -hmm. wilderness mm -hmm. and like they literally, actually, seriously, truly believed that Moses was trying to kill him. Yeah. Like wow. Moses, it, you know, I joke about it. I'm Think like, about that, huh? I'm walking by Moses' tent one evening, yeah, and someone right. comes back, like, yo, yeah. I was walking by Moses' tent, mm -hmm. and yo, I heard him and God talking, <laughs> and they were planning on killing us in the wilderness. <laughs> and that, that rumor spreads, and now the whole camp is like, we know what you're up to. Mm -hmm. You and God, mm -hmm. y'all trying to kill us in the wilderness. Not just us and the cattle, yeah. and our children. Yeah. Wow. Tell the truth. Yeah. As Come it's on. there That's in the up. Bible. Right. Moses, right. why have you brought us out here to kill us, mm -hmm. and our children, mm -hmm. and the cattle? Why the cattle, Moses? <laughs> why are you after? <laughs> and and, wow. and the implication is, what a terrible person you the are. The implications, yeah. you know? And no matter what, there was one time where, you know, they swallowed up Korah's rebellion. Mm -hmm. God opened up the earth and mm -hmm. swallowed up all those in rebellion. And the people the next day came back and was like, why'd you kill God's people? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when Satan has your mind, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what a person does yep. or doesn't do. Mm -hmm. You see one thing and one thing only. Mm -hmm. Evil, mm -hmm. and that's what they saw in Daniel. Mm -hmm. This guy is evil. Yep. 
and you know the ends justify the means yep. you know he's just not a good guy I mean imagine that this mm. is exactly what they did with Jesus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's crazy it is all right let's keep going good stuff so far good mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. all right so uh, verses 16 Yvonne, can you read for us verses 16, and let's go all the way to verse 20. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Okay. Mm. There's a word in here that I want us to look at that is so powerful and beautiful. Darius, I don't know how long he's known Daniel, mm -hmm. right? But Darius is like... Daniel, the God you serve continually. Mm. Has the God that you serve continually. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Because we're going to see this word in the prophetic picture in Daniel chapter 8. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that Satan wants to take that away. Mm -hmm. He wants to take away this continual worshiping of God, this continual mm -hmm. dependence on God, this continually looking to God. Daniel's like, I'm not going to stop. Mm -hmm. Like, this is going to continue. Windows open. I'm sold out for God, right. right? Are we? Because what we see here is Satan working through the highest authorities of this earth that he can, that he can counter on his side, outside of Darius, to pass laws to stop us from worshiping God continually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And other people who are on the sidelines, who may be in positions of responsibility going, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Man, I got sideswiped. Are you... Are you, a, are you, Daniel, is the God you worship continually, consistently, without end? You're just sold out for him. You will not compromise your worship of him for his four commandments, right? Mm -hmm. Is he able to deliver you? Of course, we haven't answered that question yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because this is the question that we have to answer before Daniel answers it. Mm -hmm. Do we believe that God is able to deliver us as we trust in him continually? Mm -hmm. From the lions. Mm -hmm. What does the lion represent in the Bible? There's a couple of places where we find, or at least one place where we find 1 Timothy or 1 Peter, mm -hmm. where a lion represents Satan, Satan. seeking to mm -hmm. devour, devour us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you think about that, you think, do we believe that God can deliver us as we continually trust in him from the devourer, from Satan, from his deceptions, from his lies, yeah. from his plots? Yeah. Hold your place here. And if one of you could turn to Matthew 27, um, verse 43, Matthew 27, verse 43. And, uh, and, and, and then I'd like you to read verse 60 to 66. Okay, starting in verse 43 of Matthew chapter 27. He trusted in God, let him deliver him uh, now if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Okay. And he said 60 to 66. Yeah, so just pause for a second. Okay. So here we have Jesus on the mm -hmm. cross mm -hmm. and the question is being asked, you know, you, you said, you know, he trusted in God, mm -hmm. let him deliver him. This is mm -hmm. a parallel, parallel of what's happening in Daniel chapter six, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys remember, we're gonna do this real quick, one of our recaps, <laughs> we've been following three lines. Remember the life of Christ, right? We saw that in Daniel chapter one, we have the temptation of appetite. Mm -hmm. Daniel crosses the, um, the, the Euphrates, Euphrates, and then he his first temptation is appetite, Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 2, man falls because of pride. He's destroyed by a stone to the foot. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what Satan tries to do with Jesus. Hey, mm -hmm. throw yourself down. You will not mm -hmm. surely dash your foot against a stone. That's the second temptation. Third temptation, bow down mm -hmm. and worship. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened in Daniel chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 4, you have the, the dream of the tree. 
and the tree whose branches lodge out into the air and all the birds and Jesus himself quotes, mm -hmm. not quotes, but mm -hmm. borrows from that very image to describe the true tree, mm -hmm. which is the tree of Calvary. That's mm -hmm. Daniel chapter four. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter five, Cyrus goes into the deep mm -hmm. to open the gates to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. Christ as a second Cyrus mm -hmm. descended into the grave on our behalf to open the gates of death to set the captive free. Mm -hmm. And now you have Daniel 6, mm -hmm. where a stone, just go ahead and read verse 60 mm -hmm. to 66 mm -hmm. before I come. <laughs> 60 to 66. And laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of uh, the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite of the tomb. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, He has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Mm -hmm. Pilate said to, to them, You have a guard. Uh, go your way, make it secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Mm. Mm. Sealing the stone and mm -hmm. setting the guard. Mm. They put a seal upon the stone. Mm -hmm. You have here the very same thing happening in Daniel chapter 6. Mm. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel comes up out of the tomb, out of the tomb, uninjured, unharmed mm. by the lion, mm -hmm. by the lions. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes up out of the grave, unharmed by that roaring wow. lion, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And so you have this beautiful picture of Christ mm -hmm. where that very answer, is your God able to deliver you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at what happened at the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we see what yes. happened at the cross, we have the answer to mm -hmm. that question. Mm -hmm. Yes, my God is able to deliver me, mm -hmm. even from death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That's hope for, mm -hmm. you know, all who die in the grave. Guess mm -hmm. what? If mm -hmm. your name was written in the book, mm -hmm. Daniel 12, mm -hmm. 1, everyone that is found written in the mm -hmm. book shall be what? Mm -hmm. Delivered. Mm -hmm. Same word. Yep. Mm -hmm. Delivered. Same word. Mm -hmm. Same word. Yep. Wow. Praise God. Amen. I love the picture also um, of Darius because it reminds us when we go to Calvary of Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, of um, others like um, Nicodemus and some of the other disciples who were struggling to believe in Christ but who through this experience believed. Yeah. Hmm. And Darius through this experience, um, we're gonna see, sets out a decree. He, 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 even, he even says, even before Daniel's resurrected, I mean, Daniel's brought out of the, mm -hmm. mixing the two stories now. Yeah. He says, I can't eat right now. Right. I don't even wanna listen to music. Right. Now. Like, I just can't even sleep right now. Right. And what's really interesting is, of all people, I mean, we know Daniel is blameless, but Darius, of all people, is in a sense a type of Christ here, a type of God. Mm -hmm. God doesn't slumber or sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's watching over us. He's concerned for us. He's thinking about us all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not in the same anxious way that we are, right. but in a watchful, careful, loving yeah. way. Yeah. And so Darius, in a sense, is a type of God right here. You know, he's got these godly principles yeah. where he's thinking about the other person. He can't sleep. Mm -hmm. He can't eat. He can't listen to music. He's just concerned about Daniel. Yeah. And I love that picture. God's Christ did not consider it a place for a, a heaven, a place to be desired while we were lost. Yes, mm. and, I, and I love this picture that God has people who aren't necessarily Christians, right, mm -hmm. everywhere, and they exude these principles. And who are we to deny these principles? Mm. You know, we can't do that. We yeah. need to. We need to to water them and to nourish them mm -hmm. and to say, yeah, those are good principles. You may not be going to my church. You may not be going to any church, but those are great principles. Mm -hmm. I want to just encourage you to, 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 um, to, to um, develop those principles in your walk and in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, those are principles of Christ, mm -hmm. principles of Christ's character. Yes. Um, again, this is, you'll notice that I'm jumping ahead a lot into mm -hmm. other chapters because I want to set a foundation mm -hmm. so that when we get there, you're like, yeah. yeah. But there's a prophecy in the book of Daniel that we're going to get to called the 70 week prophecy. Mm -hmm. And that 70 week prophecy basically in a nutshell points to the time that Christ would come, right? Beginning specifically with his baptism. Mm -hmm. And that prophecy takes us down to his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the 70 week prophecy. 
If you were to say, hey, some of the 70 week prophecy, prophecy for me, it points to Christ beginning his ministry at the Jordan and, uh, you know, go, takes us up to his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. What you have in Daniel chapter 1, 2, 3, mm -hmm. Daniel crossing the, the Euphrates, first three chapters, the beginning of his ministry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Death, I mean, um, uh, three temptations of Christ, the last three chapters, death, burial, and resurrection, that is basically the 70 week prophecy. Mm -hmm. So in Daniel one through six, you basically have a snapshot mm -hmm. of the 70 week prophecy mm -hmm. in living color, mm -hmm. wow. right? You're seeing, this is what the prophecy was about. Mm -hmm. The beginning of his ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection, one through six is the 70 weeks. And then what's so powerful is that the very next cha chapter, Daniel seven, mm -hmm. is where we're introduced to the 1260 year prophecy. Mm -hmm. The very next chapter, Daniel eight, is where we're introduced to the 2300 day prophecy. Mm -hmm. So you literally have from Daniel one to eight, the very order of the three major time prophecies in the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. the 70 weeks, chapters one through six, the 1260, chapter seven, the oh. 2300, chapter eight. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's going to be something you want to keep in mind mm -hmm. again as we move forward in the, in the, in the study. Yes. All right, let's get the answer now. Yep. Yes. The answer is going to come beginning with verse 21 and we'll read all the way through the rest. Okay. Then uh, Daniel, go ahead. Ready? then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth mm. so that they have not mm. hurt me mm. because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Mm. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. Mm. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Mm. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples, nations and languages that dwell on all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. Mm. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the wow. Persian. Mm -hmm. Now, Daniel, this is, Daniel was, Daniel was a witness. You know he was. Yes. Because what Darius is saying here, basically he's saying, yeah, that image is true. Daniel's already told him about this. He must right. have, because he's saying, right. he says right here, he says, this is the living God, verse 26, who's steadfast forever and his kingdom will, shall not be destroyed and right. his dominion shall be even to the end. Right. He's quoting from Daniel 2, the vision right. right there. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. He knows this. Yes. He knows yeah. this. Yeah. this. Yeah. Another thing is where it says, peace be multiplied uh, to you. When you go to Daniel chapter 4, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king, right. to all peoples, nations, mm. and languages that dwell in all the earth, mm. peace be multiplied to you. Yeah. In verse mm. 2, I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the mm. Most High God has worked for me. Mm. So like in each, mm. under each king, he was yes. always pointing yeah. people to God, yeah. always pointing and people to God. What's interesting is that, you know, just along that, that line of thought, if in each kingdom, God is pulling people out of those kingdoms mm -hmm. that are glorifying him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You find this not only in Babylon, not mm -hmm. only in Medo-Persia, you're going to find it in Greece. Mm -hmm. You also find it in Rome, right? Mm -hmm. Think about that Roman soldier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Truly, this was the son of God, mm -hmm. yes. right? So you have these different, God is working through his people mm -hmm. to minister mm -hmm. to other people who do mm -hmm. not know who he is. Yeah. Another thing that's really beautiful here is verse 23, the king was exceedingly glad for him. Yes. And there's a lot of people that aren't necessarily believers that are gonna be exceedingly glad when truth is vindicated. Yeah. They, they may not know what we know, but they're, they have in their heart a desire to see good conquer and evil vanquished. Mm -hmm. And they're exceedingly glad when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And the first thing Daniel says basically, he's, when, he's, when he's responding here, he says, unto, um, and then Dan said Daniel, verse 21, unto the king, O king, live forever. 
That completely mm -hmm. flies in the face of everything that yeah. the, the princes and she said about Daniel. Yeah. Oh, king, live forever. Right. Yeah. He, he doesn't regard you, king. He doesn't, he doesn't, yeah. 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 Oh, king, live forever. And then my God has sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth because, and they have not hurt me for as much as in me I was innocent and I haven't done any hurt to you, okay? Right. Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the whole character of Daniel now is yeah. vindicated yeah. by this whole experience. And the king is just happy about that. Yes, I did trust in you. I had the right. I ha and there are people out there like, it's going to be hard for them to discern. Like yeah. between, there's a lot of political maneuvering that's going to go on with the beast and deception. Yeah. Yeah. But they're going to be able to figure out and they're going to be so happy that I was right about you. I was right about this truth. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. It's going to be vindicated. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I want to do one last thing. Mm -hmm. We have a few minutes left. We got to do our recap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The king of the south mm -hmm. pushes against the king of the north. 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 The king of the north comes back against the king of the south with chariots and horses uh, and defeats the mm -hmm. king of the south. south. Mm -hmm. Okay, the king of the, um, the king of the north then enforces the wine of Babylon. Of Babylon. Of Babylon. That's mm -hmm. chapter one. He hears tidings from the north and the east, east and the north that yes. trouble him. Mm -hmm. He sets up. An image? I'm, I'm testing you guys. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> You're looking at me to answer. <laughs> keep keep yeah, going. Keep going. Keep no, not you. <laughs> you. That's a, that's a, that's a, an image. <laughs> an image. He sets up an image, mm -hmm. uh, plants his, uh, uh, or Royal. glorifies in his palace. Mm -hmm. His sins reach unto right. heaven. heaven. Right. And mm -hmm. then as a result of all this, Cyrus mm -hmm. or Michael mm -hmm. stands, stands up. up. Stands up. Mm -hmm. And Daniel chapter 6 there's a death decree. Mm -hmm. There's a time of trouble such as never was. Mm -hmm. But those that are found written in the book mm -hmm. will be delivered. delivered. Mm -hmm. Now we've just seen Daniel 1 through 6 mm -hmm. literally parallel the events of Daniel 11, 40 mm -hmm. to 45 and Daniel 12, 1 and 2, mm -hmm. ending with they shall be delivered. delivered. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Revelation chapter 13. That's right. Yeah, so we got perfect parallels here. Beautiful. Um, writing, I mean, inspired writings to just all coalesce together, all come together and give us the same message over and over again. It's beautiful mm -hmm. to see how God's work, how mm -hmm. God's word does that. What a powerful chapter. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's personal, it's practical, um, it's present truth mm -hmm. for us today. Yeah. And it's history that gives us courage for the trials and the, the, the events that we're going to be facing.